If you or a loved one are struggling with type 2 diabetes, you should visit the link in the description below. This clinically proven drug-free program lowers blood sugar to a normal level and can completely reverse type 2 diabetes within just a few weeks. Here's today's video. The question, which is the best Ayurvedic clinic to cure diabetes? Answer by Manisha Saxena. Diabetes, as we are all aware, is a silent killer. Once its seeds are sown within the human body, it gradually starts casting its ominous shadow on the metabolic system of the victim and specifically targets and cripples the metabolism of glucose, leading to high blood glucose levels in diabetes. Diabetes manifests in two variations, type 1 and type 2. Nowadays, much attention is being given to Ayurvedic medicine for diabetes which includes herbal supplements and natural herbal remedies, besides diabetic diet plans, for arresting the progress and onset of this metabolic disorder. Ayurvedic remedies are fast gaining pop, hilarity due to the proven efficacy of such treatments and ease of following these courses. Also, lesser probability of harmful side effects is also a major reason why more and more people prefer to go herbal those days for treating diabetes and many other major ailments. Ayurvedic Herbal Cure for Diabetes Given below is a list of herbal substitutes that are believed to be effective in controlling the various symptoms and signs of diabetes. Numerous combinations of these herbal substitutes are available that have proven to be extremely effective Ayurvedic treatment for diabetes. Source, www.lazoi. Answer by Rajinder Bala. No medicine system has been proven to be of any use in curing diabetes. If you like adventures do read the following till end and give comments what relates to your diabetes. Diabetes symptoms are increased thirst, frequent urination. Thirst is caused when the blood volume is reduced. So the first target for management of diabetes should be to increase blood volume. Once thirst is managed frequent urination will automatically stop. Urination will reduce because in the absence of thirst a person may drink much less water. Drinking water with meals can improve health in following ways. This question had troubled me for more than 15 years. I changed various formats of drinking water. I drank water on empty stomach for a good 10 years or more. I used to avoid drinking water with meals. Results whitish layer on tongue. Increased sensation of thirst with passage of time. Fix saliva. The taste of food was impaired. I did not like the taste of most of the food that once I used to like. So two months back I decided to drink 200 to 300 milliliters water with each meal. Result shocked me I stopped feeling thirsty. Saliva volume increased tenfold. Food started tasting better. There seemed to be significant improvement in the sharpness of brain. Not drinking water for 36 hours was very easy. The first argument against drinking water with meals is that it will dilute the stomach acids. I do not think that is right. Stomach acids are produced after we eat food. Based on the volume of food and type of food that we eat, sto, mock acids are produced. If we take 50% of our normal meal there will be 50% acids that will be there in stomach. Same way if we eat non-veg the amount of acids that stomach will have will be far as compared to when we eat veg food. Same way water taken along with meal will become part of the food and stomach acids will be adjusted accordingly. Let us first understand about what is there in our body. 65 to 75 percent of body weight is fluid 15 percent of body weight is bones 5 percent could be waste sitting in large and small intestines waiting to be excreted rest is fats muscles and other molecules so going by weight volume fluid should be most important otherwise also bones fat and muscles are fed the nutrients supplied by fluids they all bones muscles etc are stationary it is the fluid which moves from one place to another so we need to control and understand the working of fluids. This fluid is there in three major compartments. Of the total fluid 10% is blood. Rest of 90% fluid is there in cells and in space between cells. Blood, 10% of total fluid, feeds the nutrients to rest of 90% fluids. But think what will happen if the 90% of the fluids fall short of minerals and carbs. Now understand that almost 70% of the minerals and carbs are manufactured in the body itself with the help of other minerals hormones and enzymes. Think again if there is shortage of blood glucose in 90% of the fluids the body, liver, will raise glucose in the blood by assigning top priority to convert everything into glucose. Glucose is the single most important nutrient needed in our body. No diabetic dies due to excess of blood glucose. They die when body fails to meet the requirement of glucose. When there is shortage of energy heart and other vital organs do not get enough energy to operate optimally. 
P. Heart attack and cholesterol is never caused by anything but by excessive fluids caused due to insufficient energy supplied to the heart to push the fluids with required force. Heart stops working due to lack of energy and not due to clotting. Clotting takes place when heart stops working. The explanation of drinking water with meals is as under. When we eat food our stomach produces acids and other enzymes to convert the food and other liquids into a paste. This paste is passed on to small intestines. Small intestine is connected to blood veins. The minerals, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, water, enzymes, and other nutrients are absorbed in small intestines and moved to liver for further processing. After processing in liver the mineralized blood is sent to kidney for balancing of the minerals. Any minerals found to be out of correct proportions are filtered out. First benefit of this will be that blood volume will increase as more fluids will be absorbed with minerals because of more water content in the food. Second there will be better absorption of minerals, proteins, carbs and fats etc. When we drink water on empty stomach there will be acid production in stomach. The water will not be absorbed in small intestines. If we drink water after more than 1 no minutes after a meal, the water will not form part of the paste. Now take an example take some toothpaste in a bottle. Add some water to that. Now shake the bottle for 15 minutes. After shaking for 15 minutes you can see water and particles of paste separately. This water will not be absorbed in small intestines. Even the absorption of minerals will be low due to formation of crystalline paste. That is what will happen in our stomach. So we should drink water in the middle of a meal. Or rather spread out the water evenly throughout the meal. So drinking water with meals should help cure varicose veins problem and other health conditions associated with poor blood circulation as well as anemia. It should also help improve the skin. It should remove the dark eye spots and improve eyesight. It can improve cataract as well. It can prevent prostate cancer as well. There are 1000s of possibilities. But I remember very clearly that when I increased my water intake and started drinking on empty stomach all the health problems were cured in less than 10 days. Same result I saw with lot of other people also. That is an indication that drinking water on empty stomach is meant to remove metabolic toxins. So we do need to drink water on empty stomach as well after every few days. Diabetes cure and weight loss. When we drink water or any other liquid after more than 10 minutes after a meal, the water and other liquids are not absorbed in small intestines, in the absence of stomach acids. Stomach acids are produced only in response to food and not in response to water and other liquids. The liquids and water are passed on the large intestines. In large intestines also the excess water and vitamins are absorbed. However the large intestine does not absorb any minerals, carbohydrates, fats and proteins. This water is passed on to intracellular fluids. No processing is done by liver and kidneys. This is kind of direct reach to the body fluids which are passed on to cells. Over a period of time, the intracellular fluids around the large intestines become devoid of most of the minerals. These fluids are also striped off the essential glucose. In the absence of glucose the metabolic rate falls which causes increase in blood sugar to compensate for the lack of glucose in intracellular fluids. Absence, or lack, of glucose in interstitial fluids will cause flight of fluids from blood making a person feel thirst all the time. That gets converted into diabetes in due course of time. But not drinking any fluids except with meals will dehydrate the large intestine and surrounding areas of excess fluids. This will result in increase in metabolic rate. It will also help reduce intracellular water. Average total intracellular fluid makes up about 30 to 50 liters of fluid. That means a loss of 5 liters of intracellular fluid can be brought in about 30 days. That is the fastest and safest weight loss that is possible. But weight loss is not happening? I am expecting it come later. Body goes through a process of adjustment. There are obvious improvements. Weight loss will follow. The increase in blood volume may cause weight gain initially. As the metabolic rate picks up the weight loss will be there. The excess water reaching in large intestine is the cause for prostate problems. Read my blog for detailed explanation about the role of fluids in our body. My blog in brief. Chronic mineral imbalance in blood leads to low metabolic rate resulting in aging and age-related diseases like blood sugar, blood pressure and heart disease etc. To correct mineral imbalance to hydration dehydration cycles and to increase resting metabolic rate do walking and rest routines as detailed on my blog. Read my blog for more details and, or watch my YouTube videos at, Rajinder Balaj. To increase resting metabolic rate, RMR, do the following. Walk for 5 minutes at easy pace within your home in the morning. After walking rest for 510 minutes in bed. Repeat the above 3 times in the morning, afternoon, evening and at night before sleeping. 
so that makes for 12 walk and rest routines or 5 by 12 equals 60 minutes of walk for the entire period. One can do it selectively during weekdays and on working days only in the morning and at night. The idea about walking is that it mobilizes energy and before the entire mobilized energy is spent we rest. In such a case a part of the mobilized energy becomes available for vital organs. Doing walking and rest routines takes care of aging related diseases as well. Hydration Dehydration Cycles Day 1 to 5 drink 300 milliliters water with every meal. Total fluids intake on these days should not exceed 600 milliliters to 900 milliliters. Day 6 and 7, drink 200 milliliters water every 2 hours from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Repeat after 7 days till you are completely free of diabetes. Hopefully in case of pre-diabetics this will work in 15 to 30 days completely reversing the diabetes. After you get free of diabetes and your blood sugar reading are back to normal you can start drinking water at any time but keeping in view the above principles. The big question that one may be interested to know will be why should then a person drink water on empty stomach or at any time other other than meal. Initial results indicate that water reaching large intestines help removing the metabolic waste. So that is also equally important. Sugar, food etc. has no bearing on diabetes and blood sugar management. 1-2 to two persons have reported reversal of diabetes in less than 10 days. Also read my blog for detailed explanation of how the above steps ensure perfect health. Feedback will help a lot of people out there. Answer by Dr. Vidyas, Dr. Vidyas Clinic in Tardeo, Mumbai. The consultation is free over a call or in person. All the medicines are manufactured in-house facility in Zilavasa which is US FDA approved. Diabex is one of the most popular medicine amongst patients with diabetes as it has shown them significant results. You can contact the clinic, 9820298115.